Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Thank you so much for joining American Muslim Community Foundation's <laughs> webinar on the American Muslims documentary and film. Uh, we're going to take a few minutes just to talk a little bit about AMCF and let you know a little bit more about our programs and services, and then we will pass it over to the team uh, at the documentary. So let's go ahead and dive in. So American Muslim Community Foundation started in 2016, and we are uh, a national community foundation focused on Muslim philanthropy. Uh, we help families distribute their sadaqa and zakat. We help nonprofit organizations uh, establish and build endowments. And I'll be sharing a little bit more about that. So really, a community foundation is there to publicly support uh, the community. Uh, it has a board just like any other nonprofit, and we serve our donors, the nonprofit sector, uh, and we do grants to the nonprofit community as well. Um, our vision is to be leading sustainable and strategic Muslim philanthropy for today and future generations. Our mission is to be cultivating donor giving and diversifying funding to advance charitable causes. And we do this uh, with the intentionality and focus around uh, sacred law, being strategic and sustainable, uh, collaborative, diverse, uh, with intentionality around being inclusive and doing it all with integrity as well. Um, so at a high level, uh, we offer donors what are called donor advised funds. And DAFs are really a charitable giving mechanism for families to put in their charitable giving into one account. Uh, and the main benefit is at tax time, they get one receipt. They can hold on to it for the rest of their lives. They can pass it on generation to generation, and they can still distribute to all of the charities that they want to from that one source. And most importantly, they can invest that for future growth. Additionally, we operate giving circles. So these are groups of friends uh, or family that come together to give to a common cause. They can donate on a monthly basis and then distribute on an annual basis. They can hold a grant period and request for proposals as well. So it's a little more fun when you give with your friends and see that collective impact. Uh, additionally, for nonprofits, we offer endowments, which are investment vehicles for these family, uh, for these charities to create more sustainability. Uh, and this is a really great historical Islamic practice as well uh, that we're hoping and helping uh, nonprofits revive the practice of. And lastly, we offer leadership development opportunities uh, through our programming, such as the Social Impact Accelerator, where nonprofit leaders can come and learn best practices of marketing and development and organizational um, best practices. That being said, our impact is that we manage and operate over 165 donor advised funds. We have over 17 endowments. We've distributed more than $10 million to nonprofit organizations, and we currently have over $2 million of assets under management. I just want to give a quick shout out to some of our partners over the last few years. Uh, special shout out to Muslims in America, A Year of Learning, MPAC, Half Ardeen, VFairs, Zakat Foundation, Bayan, Islamic Relief, Margaret Casey Foundation, and, the, uh, and all of the other partners that we have as well. Um, a few weeks ago, uh, earlier this month, you all have heard, I'm sure, of the wildfires that took place in Maui. American Muslim Community Foundation is partnering with Muslim ARC and launch good. We've raised over $38,000. This is an example of a giving circle, community coming together to support a cause. 
and we are going to be sending the funds to organizations working directly in Maui. Uh, so thank you to our partners, Muslim Arc and Launch Good, in supporting that. Lastly, I am really excited to share with you that American Muslim Community Foundation will be hosting our annual symposium in Muslim Philanthropy Awards. Please save the date for Saturday, November 18th from 2 to 4 p.m. Eastern. You can nominate community members for these awards. You can uh, learn more about the programs and all of the different types of awards at our website, amuslimcf.org slash awards. Um, but let's get into why we're all here. We want to be learning about this unique opportunity uh, that is going to be um, published with PBS and at, in the early next year. So I'm going to pass it over to the team. I'll share their introductions, and we'll get to learn a little bit more about the American Muslims documentary film. So without further ado, we have uh, Dr. Maitha Al-Hassan. She is a journalist, poet, and scholar whose work bridges media engagement, social justice, academic research, and artistic expression. She produces and writes for the Golden Globe and Peabody winning series, Rami, which I love. So thank you for that. Uh, she is a pop culture collaborative Pluralist Visionaries Fellow, try saying that five times fast, and a Harvard Religion and Public Life Media and Entertainment Fellow. I don't know how you find the time to do everything, Maitha. Um, as a journalist, she's worked on air as an on-air host with Al Jazeera English, also field reporting for such outlets as CNN, Huffington Post, Mike, and The Baffler. In 2017, she received her PhD in American Studies and Ethnicity from USC, an MA in Anthropology from Columbia University, and a BA in Political Science and Arabic and Islamic Studies from UCLA. If that didn't impress you, I'm sure everything you hear from her today will continue to inspire you as well. Next up, we have uh, Zahir Ali. And he is committed to leveraging the power of storytelling for social change. He's currently the inaugural executive director of the Hutchins Institute for Social Justice at the Lawrenceville School, an innovative secondary school in initiative supporting social justice, teaching and practice through scholarship, programming and experiential learning. He is also a Pillars Fund Muslim Narrative Change Fellow and was a 2020 to 2021 Open Society Foundation Soros Equality Fellow. He directed Brooklyn Historical Society's Muslims in Brooklyn Public History and Arts Project and was a lead researcher for Manning Marable's Pulitzer Prize winning Malcolm X biography. So much respect for Zahir. Uh, both Maitha and Zahir are executive producers on this documentary film. Next up, we have none other than Malika Bilal, and she is an award-winning international news journalist who splits her time between Los Angeles and Washington, D.C. She hails from a family of amazing Bilalians. Her sister is awesome, but we're here to talk about Malika. She's originally from Chicago, uh, and She's currently the host of The Take, an interview-driven news podcast that builds on the global reporting of Al Jazeera English. She joined The Take after eight years as co-host of Al Jazeera's The Stream, an Emmy-nominated TV news talk show broadcast to more than 310 million households in more than 140 countries. A Chicago native, Malika graduated from Northwestern University's Middle School of Journalism. She previously worked for Voice of America and has written for the Chicago Tribune, NPR, and ESPN. Malika has reported from across the U.S. and Middle East and has interviewed guests spanning the political and entertainment spectrum from President Jimmy Carter and the Dalai Lama to Lupita Nyong'o and Trevor Noah. Her favorite interviews, though, are with the people you haven't heard of yet. And last but not least, we have Eamon Ismail 
who is the staff writer at Slate Magazine. He is an award-winning journalist, podcast host, video editor, and photographer. I mean, look at that photo. His work focuses on how identity and religion interact with politics. He wrote and produced Who's Afraid of Aim and Ismail, a video series that moved beyond stereotypes of both American Muslims and their self-professed adversaries, finding hope and fault in both. He's been featured on CNN, Adweek, GQ, HuffPost, and NPR. Eamon has been awarded an ASME Next Award as well as prizes from the RNS and Gold, Gold Zahir Awards. He is an experienced podcast producer and video editor with a demonstrated history of working in the publishing industry. He has a BFA in visual arts and film from Rutgers, the State University of New York, New Jersey, New Brunswick. Additionally, Eamon was a nominee for the Muslim Philanthropy Awards Young Professional category in 2021. And finally, according to his website, in his spare time, Eamon plays with pigeons in New York City. All right, I'm going to turn it over to the American Muslims documentary team. Uh, and both Eamon and Malika are hosts in this documentary. So team, take it away. So I will start off. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome, everyone. And uh, Muhi, thank you so much and the team at the American Muslim Community Foundation for hosting this um, share. And um, for those of you who are joining us um, uh, to learn more about this incredible project, just listening to the bios. And of course, I know um, our, our team really well, but just listening to the bio just excites me all over again of what a wonderful, amazing group of people that we are getting a chance to work with on this exciting project. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the origin of the project and why it's so special to us. Um, and, and I think Maitha and I will sort of trade off on that and then we will introduce um, Eamon and Malika to talk more about their involvement in the project. Um, so this is an evolving project that began, I think, in 2017 uh, and has gone through several iterations. Uh, in its most recent iteration, I think what's important for us is thinking about why this is unique. Uh, there are many documentary projects uh, that have uh, uh, addressed or told the various Muslim stories. And one of the reasons why this project is so unique has to do with the shift in the narrative framing of these stories. And I'm just going to touch on them briefly um, to give you a sense of why we are so excited to do this work. Uh, one is in this work, we have shifted from the frame of inclusion to expansive history. Um, we are not attempting to, to fit in um, Muslim stories into an existing narrative, but rather expand the lens with which we view and understand American history to see that our histories have always been part of, of this history. And so this is not about um, being inclusive. This is about being expansive in our storytelling. The second really important shift is a shift away from the abstract treatment of Muslims and Islam uh, as an abstract other idea to grounding these stories in the experiences of real people historically, that through their everyday lives, we elaborate and tell these broader narratives. And the third uh, is a shift from contributionism to transformation. This is not about all of the wonderful things that Muslims have quote unquote contributed to America. This is about how Muslims have been part of the transforming and becoming of America. Uh, and so this is not about how Muslims have, this is shift number four, not about how Muslims have become American, but how America is becoming and unfolding as the ongoing project that it is and that how Muslims have been very much a part of this process. And finally, this is not a concern about representation and making sure our stories are represented. Yes, it is about that. But more importantly, this is about us telling our stories. And so a shift from representation to authorship. So these five uh, narrative shifts have really um, been our compass in guiding the development of these uh, stories for this project. 
and I am so excited to be a part of it. Um, the project consists of six uh, short digital uh, uh, episodes, uh, and I'll talk about what the first three are about and then hand the mic over to, to Maitha to talk a little bit about the other three. Um, one episode will look at the story of um, uh, experiences of enslaved uh, uh, Muslims in the United States through the lens of a man named Yaro Mahmoud. Uh, the second episode will look at the uh, experiences of Muslims through the lens uh, of the presence of a Quran in Thomas Jefferson's library. And the third episode uh, is going to look at the role of American Muslims in the Civil War. So those are the first three episodes that we're tackling. And then I'm going to hand it over now to Metha to tell us about the three other episodes and, and some of the other important um, ideas and, and features about this project. Hi, everybody. I'm sorry, I didn't time this correctly with my laundry going off. I hope you can't hear the spinning of the cycle. Assalamu alaikum, everybody. Thank you for having us. Just like Zaheer, I am so thrilled to be involved in this project. Again, the more that we talk about this, the more excited I am. And I can't wait in a second to introduce you to our quote unquote hosts. I'm going to give you a little bit of a background and how we're remixing that as well. So the next three episodes are the episode that um, Ayman is at the helm of telling the story of early Arab American Muslims in from what is greater Syria to, interesting enough, North Dakota through the lens of Mary Juma. Uh, and then we head over to the Southwest to tell the story of South Asian Muslims in the West Coast in the early 1900s story that a lot of folks don't know, especially of South Asians marrying Mexican folks as well. So I don't know if you know, there are a lot of Mexi Mexi in Indians. I don't know how you would say it, Mex Indians. <laughs> um, and then the next story or our sixth story is about the first known photograph of a black Muslim woman with a hijab. And that story from Chicago is told to you through Malika's investigation and discovery of it. And what, I, uh, what I'm hinting towards, and I'll, I'll go into a little bit more detail, is that we're not necessarily calling them hosts, we're calling them seekers. And once again, I'll get into that, but some of the nitty gritty stuff that we want to make sure to address while we have the privilege of being in this community is, the work we need to do to continue to tell these stories with your involvement, assistance. The film might not be doing contributorism, but we need your contributions. <laughs> so let me give you a little bit of where we are at. Um, so before we had imagined the series as a two hour landmark, you know, finding your roots sort of story that would go on a PBS. And the more that we dug in, we created these this concept around short form digital series. And the short form digital series came out of a number of ways of thinking through these stories. And one is how do we tell these stories with an audience that we want to be able to reach out to? And that, audience is young folks. I mean, I don't know if people caught a glimpse of Ayman's kids. Um, and then we had a little brief moment with Malika's kids, not that young right now, but hopefully we're creating a world where these short videos could be used as curriculum and could be easily accessible as well. And um, we, we're also really excited to announce that uh, PBS Digital Studios is going to be carrying these films and we are going to do a rollout of them as well in the near future and Zaheer's going to give you a little bit more detail about that. So far right now we have support in the production process through the NEH, Doris Duke, Pillars, El Hibri, and AMCF and of course really generous individual donors 
And now we're in the editing process. We describe the first six films. The thought behind this is we have a 12 episode, 10 to 15 minute long each episode series. So we shot the first six. We need to finish shooting the next six. We need to finish editing the first six. So we need your help with that. So before we get into that, can should we show the trailer? Uh, I think uh, I'll just add on just a couple of things uh, and then we can, I, I hate to be a teaser, but, and then we'll, we'll hand it over to Eamon and Malika. I think we'll, we, we want everyone's attention to be held for the trailer. So I think we'll show the trailer after, um, but just to add on to what Metha is saying, um, we, we're very excited that this is going to be on PBS Digital Studios, which will get these, um, you know, people make projects all the time. Um, one of the things that was important for us is it's great to have like a, a documentary that airs once or, you know, for a season or whatever on PBS. Um, how do you get that into a classroom that can only, that meets for 50 minutes, right? So that's why doing these in a short form way and having it on PBS Digital Studios and working with PBS and their network to get um, curricular materials into the classroom is so important. So we will be beginning to plan community engagement events throughout 2024. Um, our, our goal is to have this series ready to launch uh, for Ramadan of next year in 2024. And so that means um, we do need uh, support to complete the editing. Uh, we Our need to complete the editing of these six uh, first six episodes is about $250,000, of which we have so far $25,000 committed. The total budget for this project, it's been very tight. Um, is $685,000, which I know sounds like a lot of money, but for six episodes, and you're going to see the quality of filmmaking, of talent that is going into this when we look at the trailer, you will see that we have exceeded the capacity that that number suggests. So I think we will be able to put uh, you can go to our website, AmericanMuslimsFilm.com forward slash donate. Um, and I think AMCF will help facilitate access to that process. Um, so there is, um, you know, uh, a call for action here uh, to be very explicit. Um, we need 225 uh, to complete the editing and make sure that the editing is on par with the quality of storytelling that we want to accomplish. Um, and again, having this um, platformed on PBS's digital uh, uh, studios channel means that it will get the access and impact into the classrooms that we want it to have. Um, so with that, I want to, before we show the trailer, I want to introduce um, uh, Eamon Ishmael and uh, Malika Bilal, who are our two seekers. We have a third. Um, but Metha, maybe you can talk a little bit about why we shifted um, this. It's not the Talking Heads documentary. Um, tell tell us a little bit why we, we did the seekers. And then we want to hear from Eamon and Malika about why um, you have um, and become involved in this project. Yes, thank you so much, Zaheer. Uh, so what's really amazing is that we do have a FUBU process for us by us, and that includes how we're ideologically framing this storytelling. As Zaheer went through the narrative frame, something about the talking head and your regular host of a travel series of a wet series just didn't seem like it resonated for what we wanted to do with this project and instead we have conceptually framed it to be the the positions that Ayman, Malika Bilal and Asma Khalid are taking on is that of seeker and the seeker as we know in our tradition is guided by this deep spiritual desire to learn to know to seek knowledge and you will find that even within our trailer, those first couple of moments of discovery and then where that curiosity leads that is also synthesized with the background of these folks who, as we know, have been telling these stories in and around our community as well, but 
they're being exposed like most of our community for the first time of our story in this country or these little tidbits that represent so much more. So this is really a spiritual quest that we have we have invited Ayman and Malika and Ishmael to be our guides on. And uh, so excited. I, I can't even tell you, every time I think about these seekers, I, I shed a little tear of gratitude because as I'm doing now, this, this is a moment where we've positioned ourselves within the media landscape where we can have the power to tell these stories. Uh, so should we go into the trailer? No, let's first hear from- uh, Oh, yes, Tika. I'm yes. so sorry. <laughs> Megna just wants to get to the trailer. Uh, you which know, the I, I, I just remember I've been watching the trailer and the wisdom that Malika and Eamon yes. drop. I'm sure they're gonna drop right now. So um, Malika, why don't you start us off and tell us why, why this project for you? Um, okay, well, first I'll say, Maitha, I'm right with you on the trailer. I actually haven't seen it myself. I wanted to wait to kind of watch it with everyone else. So I'm kind of going to be like this because that's how I feel when I see myself on cam. Anyway, I'm excited about it. I'm looking forward to seeing what everyone else's faces do. Why I got involved, um, uh, it, it basically everything that um, Maitha and Zahir said in a nutshell for me is um, the impetus behind why I want to watch it and then why I wanted to be in it. So I think it's one thing when you hear about a project and you're thinking, oh, I can't wait to watch this, but then to also then get the extra added bonus of being able to help bring those stories to people because I am a storyteller um, by trade um, was just, it, it's, it's a total blessing and I'm, I'm really happy to be a part of the project, but also because there are so many stories that I do know. I did know about Yaru Mahmoud because um, I lived in DC, but then there are stories that I had no idea about. And those are the ones that I actually ended up working on. So when we talk about being a seeker versus being like a host or, or someone who's um, on screen telling you what you need to know, the difference is I am learning right along with everyone else who's watching, even the Chicago episode. So there's one episode that took me back to my hometown where my grandparents and great grandparents have been so generations. And still, um, it, it's actually really funny because one of the pivotal scenes um, in the films that you'll eventually see, inshallah, um, takes place at this very small mosque on the south side of Chicago. I had never seen it, I had never heard of it. And one day, this is, I'm back home in Chicago, um, about to start the shoot, the Chicago part of the shoot. And I'm driving from one of my sister's houses to the other. And on the way, I, I just happened to notice a mosque. And I think this is so, this is uncanny. I've never seen that before, but something tells me I am about to learn about this mosque. So I'm driving and I pull up to it and I see the name of it. And I say, oh my God, this, I, this has clearly been here for years and years and years. And I would not have even noticed or perhaps thought deeper about it. If not for the fact that I have a research packet in my, in my Gmail telling me all the things I need to know. And this mosque is one of those locations. So that kind of encapsulates what this project was for me, a learning experience, even about things that I thought I knew about. Um, and that's what I hope it brings for other people. And then one other thing I'll add is that um, I came home from one of the later shoots and I had a great, it was a great experience, had great guests. And so I'm raving about my shoot, but I had been told about Eamon's shoot and in, in North Dakota. And I'm telling my family about Eamon's shoot and they are so excited and they cannot wait to watch it as well because it sounds unlike anything, unlike any story that I have heard or read about. Um, so just the infectiousness of when I tell people about these stories, how people's reactions um, are really tells me that we're on the right track. Thank you. Oh, Eamon, she just teed you up. So go ahead. Yo, I was going to say, um... I could listen to Malika talk all day. I was just like so in that. Uh, yeah, no. Uh, so the 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 idea for the project, I guess I'm supposed to answer that question. Like, why, why did I get involved? You'd be crazy not to get involved in something like this. What? This is historic. This has never been done before. Uh, Muslims don't even know the, the story of Muslims in America. Like, we don't even know our own story. 
Oh my God, man. Uh, I remember when Zahir first talked to me about it. I was trying to play it cool. Like I was trying to be like, yeah, sure. Maybe, maybe that'd be something I'd be interested in. But inside I was like, finally, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. This is such a crazy opportunity. And um, yeah, oh my God. So it's, I just want to like jump around and, and jump in circles because we've been working on this for a long time, right? This has been like a few years in the making and I haven't seen the trailer either. Uh, I saw like the first couple minutes of it and then I got distracted with my own kids. And so, yeah, I'm very excited. I'm going to be like Malika just hiding my face. But um, no, this is historic. Uh, this is uh, uh, basically going to, as far as I'm concerned, going to change the course of the American Muslim identity as, as we know it, right? Because I think uh, as a Muslim American who grew up in a world, I'm going to say like pre-American Muslims documentary, uh, I had no idea what to make of my identity. I, I was just trying to piece it together. Uh, you know, because you can only learn so much from your parents. They can tell you their story. Uh, you meet other Muslims, you get older and you're like, wait, you can practice differently. You meet other Muslims who are from different parts of the state and you're like, what? You even like, even though you're in the same state, you're totally different. Okay. And so being able to see a culmination of the history going back all the way, uh, like Malika T's to Thomas Jefferson is a once in a lifetime opportunity. Like this is that big of a project for me. And uh, the fact that we're we're talking about it, crowdsourcing is is a beautiful thing too, because I love what Mayfield said about this being a for us by us thing. Uh, but one of the things, the, the most rewarding things about doing it was, uh, you know, having kids while making it. You know, when we first started this project, I didn't have any kids, and so my attitude was completely different. I was like, I'm gonna come to this story and I'm gonna learn and I'm gonna, you know, uh, excavate what I don't know. And then as we started shooting, it started, it changed. Now I was like, now I'm going to be excavating for something specific. Now I'm looking for a, a piecemealed Muslim American identity that I can teach to my kid, you know, uh, so that they don't have to question or wonder what is the Muslim American story. Um, it's funny. I, I joked with Graham, who's the director of this project, that every time we, he called me up for a shoot, I had just had a kid. And so every single time uh, we went to go shoot, like, for example, in North Dakota, I had the second one and it was like just a few weeks old, both times. It was crazy. Uh, and so we joke about how the next time we shoot, I'm going to have a third. Uh, anyways, no, this is, uh, in my mind, one of the most significant uh, projects having to do with Muslims in America. And uh, the, the fact that we have an opportunity to contribute, the fact that we can be a part of it, to me, is uh, is a once in a lifetime opportunity because you know, uh, it's hard to make these kinds of things. As we can see, it can get very expensive. We may not have an opportunity to make another project like this for a long time. And so I think this is uh, our chance to tell our story, to, to discover our story, really, and and to tell it and, and place it in classrooms where it belongs. Like this to me is, it's, I can't measure how immense of a responsibility this is for all of us. So that's my piece. Thank you so much, Eamon. Um, and, and also thank you for, for naming Graham um, for, to introduce to our audience. Graham Judd um, is the director of these episodes and has been one and probably the consistent presence throughout this project from the very beginning and its various iterations. And as Metha said, initially it was conceived as a sort of two hour epic documentary um, and and for, for the reasons we've stated of making these shorter digital shorts, both to address the attention spans of our younger generation and also to make it accessible to classroom teachers as a kind of, um, you know, something that they could fit into their lesson, but also from a production side, right, that we, we didn't have to wait to get all of the money to begin shooting short episode by episode. And so doing it by six episodes and then, you know, based on that, we'll look at the other possible six because um, the other thing is that these stories, these six episodes, uh, we don't use the word representative. They're not representative of, of these stories. They're indicative because as Malika pointed out, there's so many more stories that need to be told. And we hope by highlighting um, these six um, that we give ourselves and many of, of us in our communities opportunities to tell even more stories. So um, I think with that um, is a good time for us to to watch um, the trailer and then we can ha have some, I wanna hear Eamon and Malika's 
um, reflection since they haven't seen it yet. Um, and then we can have some some discussion questions and answers. So Muhi, it's it's all yours. Wonderful. Now is the moment that we all need to collectively pray and hope that there's no electronic ele or like audio technical glitches, right? So um, this trailer has not been distributed widely. This is almost like a soft launch. As you know, the team themselves, uh, some of them haven't even seen it. So all of you are in for a treat. Uh, and we'll go ahead and get that playing. Just one moment. I'm a history buff, complete geek, and I didn't know most of the stories that we're telling you on this series, save for one. We're all taught about American history in our public schools, but I think it's only really a slice of what really America is about. Growing up, that would just change my entire life if I knew these stories. Like knowing that Thomas Jefferson had a god would have been huge. It's the first work that translates directly from the Arabic into English. There's a lot of things that the Quran has to teach the, the rest of the world. Thomas Jefferson understood that. Another story is about a man who was enslaved here in the United States during the Revolutionary War era, a Muslim man who went on to negotiate his freedom and buy a house in Georgetown in Washington, D.C an Afghan man who sailed to the United States and ended up fighting in the Civil War. In the case of Muhammad Khan, alias John Hamid, there are 2.2 million that served in the Union Army. About one quarter of those were born in a foreign country. It's really not surprising that Muhammad Khan would have been injured here. It's borderline miraculous that he wasn't killed. Going to North Dakota to see for myself a place where mosques was built in the early 1900s. No way. You ever seen a mosque like that? Never. I think people built mosques as a way of establishing belonging. I was really intrigued to learn the story of Mir Dad, who came to the United States from the Punjab in 1917. South Asian Muslims have been here just as long as many other European immigrants. Their stories were connected with the stories of other communities of color. It's a significant aspect of the past that gives a sense of a different kind of future. Okay, bismillah. A woman named Florence Watts, who might be the first known African-American Muslim woman to be photographed in hijab, they are emphasizing Islam as the natural religion for the Black man. Black Americans also see it as a lost heritage, something that they lost in the Middle Passage of Africa. The United States is not a monolith. It's made up of everyone from all walks of life. I sort of struggled with trying to piece together this American and Muslim identity my entire life. I have two kids. I'm really excited about having an answer for them. There's been all sorts of conversations going on right now in public schools about what history is and whose history ought to be taught. It's important that we understand all of America's history. This is just good for the country to celebrate the fact that these people were here from the very, very beginning. It just creates this, this deep pride in being American Muslim at the same time. So thank you so much, Muhi. Uh, I don't know if you saw uh, my message. Um, I'm not sure what happened technically, but I'm hoping that we can watch this again <laughs> um, and share. And maybe you can do a screen share from the website where the, the trailer is posted because there is a soundtrack that accompanies this and, and hopefully the replay can be smoother. And I don't think our guests would mind watching the trailer one more time. So is that something we can do? 
Definitely. Yeah, I apologize. Um, you know, some people said it was coming in choppy, so we'll test it out uh, and see if it works better directly from the website. Thank you. Of course, round two. Um, and I think the donation link also didn't work. So Metha, if you can check that as well, um, it may be missing the dot com. Um, I got a comment asking about that as well. Um, but we'll take a look at both of those. Uh, the link did work for me, by the way, the donation link did. So um, I think Ibrahim, try it again. Um, and I just repasted the donation link in the um, chat box. Great. Uh, and again, those with AMCF um, can give through their donor advised funds and we can pass on the funds to the project as well. Um, so I have the um, I have it loaded again. Let's see if uh, I can share it uh, and we'll see if it does any better. Um, but if not, then we can share the link uh, with the group as well so you can have it for uh, afterwards. So we'll give it another try. History buff, complete geek. And I didn't know most of the stories that we're telling you on this series, save for one. We're all taught about American history in our public schools, but I think it's only really a slice of what really America is about. Growing up and that would just change my entire life if I knew these stories. Like knowing that Thomas Jefferson had a lot would have been huge. It's the first work that translates directly from the Arabic into English. There's a lot of things that the Quran has to teach the, the rest of the world. Thomas Jefferson understood that. Another story is about a man who was enslaved here in the United States during the Revolutionary War era. A Muslim man who went on to negotiate his freedom and buy a house in Georgetown in Washington, D.C an Afghan man who sailed to the United States and ended up fighting in the Civil War. In the case of Muhammad Khan, alias John Mummy, there are 2.2 million that serve in the Union Army. About one quarter of those were born in a foreign country. It's not surprising that Muhammad Khan would have been injured here. It's borderline miraculous that he wasn't killed. Going to North Dakota to see for myself a place where mosques was built in the early 1900s. No way. You ever seen a mosque like that? Never. I think people built mosques as a way of establishing belonging. I was really intrigued to learn the story of Mir Dad, who came to the United States from the Punjab in 1917. South Asian Muslims have been here just as long as many other European immigrants. Their stories were connected with the stories of other communities of color. It's a significant aspect of the past that gives a sense of a different kind of future. Okay, bismillah. A woman named Florence Watts, who might be the first known African-American Muslim woman to be photographed in hijab, they are emphasizing Islam as natural religion for the Black man. Black Americans also see it as a lost heritage, something that they lost in the Middle Passage. The United States is not a monolith. It's made up of everyone from all walks of life. I sort of struggled with trying to piece together this American and Muslim identity my entire life. I have two kids. I'm really excited about having an answer for them. There's been all sorts of conversations going on right now in public schools about what history is and whose history ought to be taught. It's important that we understand all of America's history. This is just good for the country to celebrate the fact that these people were here from the very, very beginning. It just creates this, this pride in being American Muslim at the same time. Thank you uh, again. I, I'm not sure because on my end, I didn't hear the music in the background. Did people hear music in the background? 
I did. <laughs> oh, okay. Because it was uh, my, my screen and my my setup, but uh, I apologize. Yeah, I, I, well, now you all have the link. <laughs> so you can really get the um, experience of um, actually experiencing the trailer the way we intended it uh, with the full uh, sound mix. Um, I don't know, Muhi has some kind of equalizer process that just takes vocals out. Um, it's like reverse karaoke, uh, Muhi. You gave us the reverse karaoke version of the trailer. <laughs> Um, just the vocals no music or something. <laughs> um, but um i did just change the options but i don't want to take up more time because yeah i i think um the it's it's people can go to um the link and um experience it and so i want to hear let's hear a little bit from amen and malika and then we can i guess open it up for any questions that people might have Okay, cool. I'm I'm glad you guys made us seem really smart. I mean, the the whole process for me has been about discovery, and and I'm sure there's a lot of parts on camera. I'm looking at that. I'm like, what is that? Uh, so it it sounds really cool that you guys made me feel like I I know what I'm talking about. So thank you. Um, I just want to reiterate again how special this is, and how this does feel like our one opportunity to get it right and to get all of the stories in one spot. This doesn't exist anywhere. Um, and that's to me very, very meaningful to be a part of a project that is for the first time putting together sort of an almanac of the American Muslim story. So um, yeah, incredibly special. Okay. SubhanAllah, it's, it still doesn't feel real and I, and I can't wait to see it finished. Yeah, I agree. I loved it. And my, I mean, you know, my interest has already peaked and now I'm like, oh, I cannot wait to watch all of those episodes. And I would also reiterate what Eamon said that, you know, um, this is important for future generations. It's important for our own generations, but also it's just the beginning. And so if we can make this a success, there will be more. There are so many stories to tell. I love the way you put it to here that it's not really, we're not talking about being inclusive, we are being expansive. And these are just drops in the bucket with you know, six episodes, you cannot tell the entire history of Americans, uh, American Muslims. But this is a beginning, um, and I and I hope that you know it's not the end. Thank you again, um, Matha. Yeah. Thought? Yeah, I just want to add really quickly that something else that I want to bring bring to the forefront. You heard through the video that there is a concern to intervene with what's happening around public schools and what we can do is have an access point for people online and PBS is also really invested in helping us market and put the series out into classrooms and they've been relied on for a curriculum and I just want to also bring to the fore Zahir and I have specifically been creating syllabi based on these stories so we been trying to fine tune them so that there could be the expansive stories could live in an expansive network of storytelling and we've also been calling this a 360 project because like Malika said it more episodes could be told and there are more ways and modalities that we're envisioning telling these episodes whether it's a podcast whether it's other maybe the two-hour event will happen as well but yeah we'd love to hear from you your thoughts or questions um, and when you're going to share it with your family and friends to end the donate button as well. Yeah, I'm glad I see some donations came through on the uh, Network for Good site. So that's awesome. Um, I am really stoked and just really honored to uh, help facilitate this conversation. And even if it's a, a little side note that AMCF was able to help. That means the world to me to be part of some project like this. Um, there was a comment uh, earlier from somebody uh, who's an educator, uh, again, framing the importance of uh, how she's looking forward to using these episodes tremendously and how they will be a perfect fit for the classroom. Um, so I want to leave the last five minutes to any uh, open questions from the people on the call. If anybody has something they'd like to share or any closing remarks from the 
documentary team. Do we unmute or in the chat? <laughs> you no, know, please, Dima. Oh, okay, sorry. So I am super um, excited for this project. I actually donated to you guys before, and then I'm so thankful for Mohi and AMCF to sharing this information because I do um, truly believe it's such a unique project and that we should be contributing towards this because if you guys don't do it, I don't know who else will. <laughs> so I, I do have a kind of hope because my contribution is just like a drop in the bucket to what you guys need. And I'm just kind of brainstorming out loud where I, we have three large Islamic schools in our Tampa Bay, Florida area. And in order to spread awareness to help you guys get some funding, I don't know how would you be interested or some, I mean, I don't, again, that's, it's another cost. It's another factor to consider. I don't know if you guys have to travel to the Tampa Bay, Florida area, um, maybe putting on some sort of like collaborative program at one of the schools so that all three of the schools could be invited at one central location to kind of hear or share a little bit of this tidbit, you know, these little tidbits of the story to kind of inspire the future generation. Maybe they can pass out promotional materials for their parents to contribute. I don't know. I'm just kind of throwing ideas out there, like grassroots type of ideas. I mean, I could, we are, we're giving circle concepts ourselves. The organization I support is 200 Muslim who care. And like, I would love to be able to contribute to you guys, but it has to be very, local in order for us to contribute a larger portion of funds. So I'm just kind of throwing ideas out there to see if something may stick um, to help get this project funded um, sooner rather than later. So unless you have like some sort of hidden Muslim that you need to study in Tampa, Florida, like <laughs> then I'll be like, oh, we can fund it. But other than that, um, we're kind of strapped. Thank you. Thank you so much for that, that offer. Um, I think we'll have to think about all thinking all of the different ways that we can go about in this particular stretch. I, I do know I can speak more on the other end when the project is completed. We are definitely interested in all of the ways that um, we can do community engagement around this project. Um, typically, a lot of projects like this are about explaining Muslims to non-Muslims, and there's an assumption that the audience are not us. Um, and the, the wonderful thing about this project is that everyone comes away with something from um, these series. And so this is not just a project for schools where people learn about us um, who are not us. This is a, a project that we absolutely want to engage um, learners in every environment, not just the school system, but in community gatherings, in uh, Muslim schools and, and other kinds of settings. So um, I, I can speak more confidently about what will happen after, um, but certainly we'll think about with your um, suggestion, uh, ways that we can explore engaging the communities um, that we can right now. Could I suggest maybe, here's a thought, Dima, maybe there's a hybrid model where somebody from your community can show up and then we can be in Zoom. I don't know if that would work or if you're, and then of course, somebody there could play the trailer, the teaser, but we can talk more offline, but maybe if we think hybrid wise, that's definitely something we can do because um, clearly we also all have nine, you know, nine million jobs. So I wish we could get out there. Um, but this fall is probably tight and we need to raise this money pretty soon. Yeah. yeah. No, I understand. The only thing I can offer that is more the quicker is doing like, and I don't really know, you know, the return on the investment portion, but uh, at least it's a spreading the awareness where we can have either you or Malika be interviewed as a women who wow and one of our we've, we haven't done it in a while but it's kind of like an interview style on instagram and facebook where we put um something together um just to kind of help hype up um the awareness if that would be an opportunity because it doesn't cost anything <laughs> love it totally open yeah 
All right, I'll I'll connect with Muhi to get contact information, um, and then we'll definitely we'll definitely highlight EMCF. Don't worry, Muhi, I'm always got your back. Like, <laughs> and the work that they do too. So, Love something it. in regards to I'm just got to think of it has to be a woman. Sorry, Muhi, like we got to no do, do it on that line. Uh, I won't take is time. A great resource for the Tampa community, and so grateful that she has a DAF with us as well. Uh, Amr, thank you so much for your support as well. That's great. Saw that in the chat. Um, I want to be respectful of everybody's time. So if there's just a final word that anybody on the panel wants to say, uh, and then we can close out. Why don't we go around and I'll I'll be the final. Um, Eamon, Malika, Metha, one word that you want us to come away with. Is it okay if I share a few? I know I'm respectful of people's time, I swear. Uh, but I think um, one last thing that I think is really important to consider is the fact that this is uh, you know, one of the one of the last uh, opportunities I think we'll have to crowdsource something this significant for our, our story, right? Uh, this is something that I don't need, like, like my leak said, she's a history buff in the trailer and she doesn't even know these stories. I didn't know any of these stories, you know, uh, and so I think this is some one of those things that we need to uh, really do everything we can uh, as a community to to rectify, uh, because it, we can't know who we are uh, without knowing our past, and that's that's what I wanted to say. Yeah, I would pick up on that in a couple words, which is the crowdsourcing, um, and and just the ability to all feel like we're part of something. So when you watch it, you feel like I helped make this, and you know, inshallah, hopefully there's. It's also a sadaqa jariya and that and that this is a benefit not only to our community but to our greater you know american society community um and this will help go a long way in the perception and just the um the being of who we are and who we want to be in this country when i the recent statistic i found out about uh 60 percent of the union army being non-white and a quarter of the union army being foreign born folks. I've said that statistic to Muslims and non-Muslims and they're blown away. And so that's just a bit of the 10 minutes that you're gonna see and that the power of these short videos to be able to give you that desire to also be a seeker and to find out more is what we're hoping for. And of course we have these model ideal seekers to give you a template for doing that work for your community. So love the support to cross the finish line and make these available spring 2024. I, I will just, uh, and I'm sorry, it's not just a word, but um, and Nathan and I have talked about this before. When I was a little kid um, growing up in the 90s, 80s, 80s, 90s, um, I remember sitting with my parents watching Eyes on the Prize on PBS, which is this epic multi-part civil rights documentary made by Henry Hampton and Blackside Productions, a film outfit out of, out of Boston, and completely transformed the knowledge that my generation had. It's how we encountered Malcolm X and Muhammad Ali and uh, Martin King and Ella Baker and Rosa Parks and Joanne Robinson and eating it like all of these people um, that we had not encountered in school. And Maven and I have talked about this is our chance to create our version of Eyes on the Prize for generations to come to sit and get these stories recovered from the past and and shape a new generation of voices um, that will fuse this knowledge into everything that they do. Um, all of that hip hop sampling of Malcolm and the Black Panthers, all that stuff, that, that golden age of hip hop that comes out in the late er 80s, early 90s, they're getting those sound bites from Eyes on the Prize, right? So this is a way to fundamentally transform the culture of generations to come and, and produce a new generation of storytellers. Um, so that's this is our prize, alhamdulillah. You're on mute. Yep, that always happens. Uh, thank you so much.
Zahir, Maytha, Malika, Ayman, Graham, the entire American Muslims documentary film team. This is super exciting. Uh, we wish you the best. Hopefully you hit your goal really soon. Uh, and we'll connect you, AMCF will connect you with those who contributed through AMCF and mentioned on the chat here. Thank you so much, everybody. One last time, I'm going to drop all the information into the chat for you to take care of your donations, contributions. You can see the trailer uh, and help this project uh, become a reality. Thank you so much for your time, everyone. Assalamu alaikum.